With the recent release of the Automatons update for Space Engineers, there were a lot of changes and updates made to the game's AI. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a cargo drone that is able to ferry resources between two grids, one stationary, and one that changes location. So, let's get right into it. If you watched my previous drone video, you will already know the basics of how to use the AI flight and AI recorder blocks, which will be the groundwork for our drone today. So starting off, we need our drone, which already has a power source, gyroscopes and thrusters. Then we put on our AI flight blocks, which I have put into here and two AI recorder blocks. Remember, we will need one recorded path for each of our locations. You will also be needing a cockpit to be able to record the paths for the two various locations. So, once all of that is ready, we will then be needing our moving grid. In my case, I have this cargo truck that I quickly put together, which will dump resources into the drone through this sorter and connector. So once you have your moving grid ready, you can begin recording the path for the drone to use when landing. Now there is one important thing to note when recording the path. So like last time, you need to have show on HUD and show path on HUD toggled, as well as show AI functions in your info tab. I have been experiencing a bug where those waypoints that you create do not show up even though you have all of these options enabled. But fear not, you can always go into your AI recorder block and see that you've made the waypoints there. There is one important option that you need to select in the AI recorder block that you will be using for your moving grid, and that is Reference Beacon. The reference beacon will essentially allow your drone to be able to have the recorded path be referenced to a specific grid. So in my case, I've set the reference beacon to be the beacon rover, which is right in front of us. So once that is ready, we can get our recorder block for the rover, put it down on our hotbar with add waypoint, and then we can start recording. So we will start and put down one waypoint over here. Move above the rover and put one waypoint right here. And then move straight down. Get ourselves in position with the connector. Then just like in the last video, turn it off so that we can get down that last bit before then placing down our last waypoint. So once we have recorded our path, we can quickly check and see if it works. After having moved up to the very first waypoint, it'll move down to the second waypoint. And then finally, it'll move down to the third waypoint. So now that we, we have verified that this path works. Let's go ahead and turn off our flight block and then let's make our way over to our station. Now, in my case, I have this mining outpost here that the cargo drone will be delivering resources to. So once you are in position, once again, we get our second AI recorder block down onto our hotbar with add waypoint. Keep in mind, for static grids, you do not need to select a reference beacon. That is only a requirement if you are having moving grids. So once we're ready to go, we can start by adding a waypoint, move up and add our second. And just like last time, move down onto the connector, get stable, turn it off, get as far down as we can before adding the third and last waypoint. So after both paths have been recorded, we can finally set up how the drone will know when to return back to base, as well as when to return back to the rover, 
and any other functions that we might want. So you will need one event controller and in my case four timer blocks. So we will start off by setting up our four timer blocks. Let's start with the connect timer block. In here I have two actions, the connector lock and the thrusters to turn off. So every time the drone lands, it will connect to the connector and turn off the thrusters. Next, we want to set up our timer block for when it is going to travel to the rover. This timer block is for when the cargo drone is leaving the stationary base and is going to the rover. So we will start with having the AR recorder for the rover play its recorded path, have a timer block that is called after launch start, turn on the thrusters, unlock the connector, and turn the connector off. You might think, oh, if the connector is turned off, how will it be able to connect onto the rover? Well, that is where after launch comes in. The after launch timer block will turn on collision avoidance for the drone and turn the connector back on again after about five seconds. Then, once the drone has collected its resources and is going to head back to the base, we have the exact same setup for the base timer block, except that this time it is playing the AR recorded path for the base. So, once all timer blocks have been set up, we can start off by going into our event controller. Now, in my case, I have it turned off so that the drone doesn't start flying around without my permission. So, you want the event cargo filled percent selected with the condition equal or greater than, with a threshold of about 90 or so percent. Now, the issue is if you go all the way up to 100%, it has a chance of fluctuating, meaning that it won't activate properly. So, putting it at 90% will allow it to be a lot more accurate. Then, you want to make sure that you have your cargo containers selected, and then we can go to select actions. Now, with our event controller being set to 90% threshold, once the cargo container is filled up beyond 90%, it will return back to base. But the moment it dips below 90%, it'll want to go back to the rover. By having the timer blocks on start, we're able to configure how long the drone will wait before taking off once the threshold has dipped below 90%. So, with all of that set up, we should be off to the races. But wait, there is one thing you need to do. On both the base path and the rover path, we need to configure our waypoints. So on waypoint zero, we want to turn collision avoidance off, enable for our drone to be able to land. Then, on the final waypoint, which is right above the connector, we want to get our connect timer block and have it start. And we're going to do the exact same for the rover path. Let's go ahead and turn off collision avoidance. And then on the final waypoint, we are going to start the connect timer block. And that should basically be everything that you need. So if we were to set our AI flight on, on, and then turn on our event controller, you might have to change the condition in order for it to be able to detect the presence of cargo, which in our case, there is no cargo meaning that it was able to figure out I need to go over to the rover. So, it is going to the very first waypoint we gave it. Then it is going to the second. And then down it goes. 
before it connects. All thrusters are turned off. And now we should be able to see the cargo being filled up. And if we look at the event controller, it is detecting that the cargo is increasing. And the moment it goes above 90%, the timer block for base starts and the drone then proceeds to launch. So then it reaches the second waypoint and finally it moves down and docks with the station. Now, as you can see, the drone is already making its way back towards the rover, ready to be filled up once again. As we can see, its cargo is empty. And it'll keep repeating this until either the cargo of the rover is empty or it is unable to deposit the cargo into the base. In which case, it'll then remain at the base until it is able to do so. So if we can let us conduct a test to make sure that the reference beacon is working. So now that it has launched from the truck, let's go ahead and move it. So now we have pretty much turned the truck completely around and changed its location. As we can see, the drone is already moving to the very first waypoint of the cargo rover, even though it has completely changed position. It's moving in towards the second waypoint. And then lastly, it's moving down to land. Now I have done a lot of testing and it does not seem that you need a basic task block to be some form of pit stop along a route that is all the way up to three kilometers long. So your drone is able to detect two recorded paths that are three kilometers apart. I have not tested whether or not the drone is able to move between recorded paths that are more than three kilometers apart. But if you run into issues, you can always use the basic task blocks and create small checkpoints along the drone's route. Now, one question you might have is, okay, this, this, works, this works with rovers. Does it work with ships? And the answer there is yes. So as you can see, I have a drone just like the one down here, parked and ready up here. So it is going to pick up the cobalt and then it is going to fly off to the ore drop-off location. So if we give it a moment to be filled up, we can see then it begins flying off to the ore drop-off. Now if we were to move our little mothership here to let's say right over here, then we can see if the drone is able to land again. So once it has reached this waypoint, it'll do just like all the others, turning off collision avoidance, coming into the second waypoint, and then going down and landing on the third. So this works both on ships and on rovers which is honestly a really neat feature, all thanks to the reference beacon function. Another point to add is that your grids have to be stationary when the drones are trying to dock, because as you can see here, I have begun moving and the drone is trying its best to reach the waypoint, but it is unfortunately unable to. So it is going to try it once again, and we will be able to see just exactly what happens. As we can see, the drone is coming in. It is arriving at the first waypoint. Then it'll try to get up to the second, and it is unable to. So you need to be stationary in order for the drones to be able to dock. You do not need to be stationary in order for the drone to be able to take off, however, as you can see right there. And with that, 
you should now have all the knowledge that you need to be able to program a drone to move between a static and moving object. So I would like to thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to push that like button if this was helpful in any way, shape or form. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more guides like this one. And I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye!